السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وقال تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى أيضا وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون صدق الله العظيم All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. May the choicest of his blessings and salutations be upon our beloved master, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. O children of Adam, first and foremost, I enjoin upon myself and then all of you all who are present here, to adopt a life of taqwa. And that is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all moments and at all times if we wish to attain success in this world as well as the hereafter. May Allah the Almighty make us all from the people of taqwa. To proceed, today's khutbah, the title for today's khutbah is Pure Hearts. And inshaAllah, the sermon will evolve mostly around the teachings of my beloved Shaykh Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah, who was also known as the specialist of the heart. He was known as the specialist of the heart. And I felt it pressing upon me to discuss on this topic because I feel it is the need of the hour. As most of us, most of our hearts, including myself, Illa Man Rahimahullah, our hearts are riddled with diseases. And when I say diseases, I'm not talking about cardiovascular diseases. I'm talking about spiritual diseases, maladies, such as envy, hatred, anger, malice, jealousy, evil, carnal desires that have made our hearts so evil and so sick, addictions, bad habits, all of these things dominate our hearts. So what is the way to a pure heart? Look at the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith is in Muslim. In the book of Iman, Hudayfat ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu, he narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَالْحَصِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا That fitna, prior, Tribulations are presented to an individual's heart. See, most of us, we think that fitna, in other words, trials, tribulations, tests, these things are only related to one's eyes, or perhaps one's ears, or one's mouth. No. First and foremost, it is presented to an individual's heart. Because the heart is the command center for all of our limbs. If the heart commands the eyes to look, then the eyes look. On the other hand, if the heart commands the eyes to lower its gaze, then the, the eyes lower its gaze. The heart is the command center. So fitna is presented to an individual's heart. And look at the, look at the parable Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us. Kal hasir. Like a mat. A straw woven mat. Like a mat. Uda na Look at the mat. Stick after stick, the, the, the mat has been, it, the, the way it is uh, stitched is stick after stick. So fitnas will be presented to an individual's heart, stick after stick, Allahu Akbar. 
fa ayyu qalbin ushribaha nukita fihi nuktatun sauda whichever heart accepts these fitna in other words immerses itself in this evil nukita fihi nuktatun sauda a black dot is engraved on that heart may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all wa ayyu qalbin ankaraha nukita fihi nuktatun bayda and whichever heart rejects that evil thought whichever heart repels that evil thought nukita fihi nuktatun bayda a white spot is engraved on that individual's heart ala hatta tasira ala qalbayn rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes on to say so therefore hearts are of two categories ala abyada mithli safa a heart which is pure white sparkling away فَلَا تَضُرُّهُ فِتْنَةٌ مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ No fitna, no type of a test, trial, calamity would affect that heart as long as the heavens and the earth exist. وَالْآخَرِ And the other type of a heart is أَسْوَدُ مُرْبَادًا كَالْكُوزِ مُجَخِّيًا That dark heart which looks like an overturned vessel due to the black spots filling the heart. لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا that heart does not know what is good from evil it cannot differentiate between good and evil it does not recognize its creator nor does it repel evil thoughts so this is in relation to the heart my dear respected elders and brothers in islam another hadith abu huraira radiyallahu anhu narrates qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إن المؤمن إذا أذنب ذنبا كانت نقطة سوداء في قلبه. Indeed, the believer, the minute he commits a sin, the minute he perpetrates a sin, a black dot forms on his heart. فإن تاب, if he makes توبة ونزع, and he refrains from that sin, واستغفر, and he seeks forgiveness from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, سقل قلبه. His heart is polished back again pure white. Allahu Akbar. فَإِنْ زَادَ زَادَتْ If he commits an evil sin above that, then the evil black dot starts spreading حَتَّى تَعْلُوَ قَلْبَهُ Until the darkness envelops that, that heart. Allahu Akbar. Until the darkness envelops that heart. فَذَلِكَ الرَّانُ الَّذِي ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And that is the ron. That is the stain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the noble Qur'an. كَلَّابًا رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Nay, but on their hearts is the ron, is the stain of evil deeds which they used to earn. Allahu Akbar. My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that the hearts are of three types. One is the healthy heart, the soft, supple, humble heart that loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that loves good, that cannot stand evil. That is the healthy, sound, good heart. The second type of a heart is the dead heart. The dead heart, the heart that is dead, that has hardened so bad that it cannot Weep in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The words of our beloved maker has no effect whatsoever on that heart. Allahu Akbar. That is the dead heart. And indeed, we need to fear the death of our hearts, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. More than the death of our own bodies. Let us not make our bodies graves for our hearts before we in reality enter our graves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And the third type of a heart is the heart which is a sick heart, which is a diseased heart. A heart which loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the evil forces keep turning it away, keep enticing it towards evil. That is a sick heart. And that heart needs to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That heart needs to apply the cure which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us, so that that heart becomes healthy and lively. For that is the heart that will enter Jannah, and for that is the heart that will be peaceful on the day of Qiyamah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day of Qiyamah is so horrifying that that day well, no children will avail anybody on that day. On that day, the only thing that would benefit an individual, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ It will be that individual who will come with a sound, healthy heart. Allahu Akbar. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, let me swiftly move on to the three keys that Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions you can call it alexis if you will, or as keys that give life to a dead or a diseased heart. Three keys. Number one, at-tawbah. At-tawbah. I have mentioned this before and I say it again. Tawbah is not something which is reserved for the month of Ramadan. Tawbah is not something which, is, which has been reserved for sinners. Tawbah is something that we need to make part and parcel of our everyday lives. Tawbah. We need to change, we need to turn over a new leaf. We need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it's too late. So the first key to reviving a dead or a sick heart is tawbah, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions it in his book, Hadi al-Arwah ila bilad al-Afrah. He says, leaving sins. In other words, to leave sins and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawbah. Seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me quickly mention an incident that took place in the times of our Salaf and salih There was once a righteous man, a righteous man who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had followers. These followers once came up to him and asked him, please tell us of an amazing incident that took place in your life. Then he goes on to say, okay, let me tell you of a pivotal incident that took place in my life, which completely changed the bearings of my life. I was an extremely evil man before. I was an extremely evil man. I would never hesitate to perpetrate a sin. I would never ever hesitate to commit a sin. You name the sin, I have committed it. I used to have a trophy book at home where I used to go and log my sins. I used to take pride in committing sins. I used to go and make a record in this little book of mine in regard to my sins. One fine day I was walking down the street and I saw this beautiful ravishing lady. The minute I saw the lady, I just thought I need to have her. I went up to her and I told her, I invited her towards an immoral act of sex with me. To which she readily accepted immediately. The only condition she put forward was that I need this sum of money for that. I thought it was my lucky day and I immediately accepted the offer, took her and went to a private place to indulge in that haram act. I was about to touch her. When I touched, when I was about to touch her, she started trembling like a leaf. She started trembling. I told her, why are you scared? You agree. I'm not going to harm you. Then she goes on to say, my brother, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have never ever indulged in such an immoral act, but it is dire poverty, dire necessity. My husband has passed away. I have three daughters, no one to feed them. It is this dire poverty that has brought me out and it is forcing me to indulge in this haram act with you. The minute she said this, this struck a chord in that man's heart. He, his heart immediately trembled and turned towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He got up from the place he was in. He told the woman, yeah, keep the money. I do not want to indulge in this haram. And he left the place. A man who never hesitated to commit a sin. He goes, he's on his way home, and then he thinks, let me help that family even more. He goes, buys provisions, takes money, finds out where this lady lives, goes to her doorstep, knocks the door, and leaves the provision, and moves. He does it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He goes home. He had the habit of telling everything to his mother. He goes to his mother and relates the whole incident to his mother. His mother starts weeping, and then she says, Oh my son, I know of your little book that you record all of your evil deeds in. I have even gone through it with much sadness. I advise you now, I implore you, please go and write this good deed in that book, for this is the first good deed that you have done. 
he agrees, he goes to his book. He opens the book, lo and behold, all the pages of that book are blank. And the only thing that is written in that book, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Indeed, good deeds erase or delete all of your evil deeds. Allahu Akbar. He made tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him of all his sins. Allahu Akbar. He was given a new book. He had turned over a new leaf. He was given a fresh lease to his life. Allahu Akbar. He writes the good deed and begins his journey on that path of goodness and righteousness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with piety. So the first key, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam is tawbah. The second is to be humble in front of Allah in secrecy. You Not to do it for the sake of people or for show, but to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, ikhlas. Time does not permit me to delve into that particular key. And the final key, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, the final key, like I said, to leave sins, that is tawbah, to, uh, and the final key is to ponder on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the dead heart, the dead heart which has hardened the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not have any effect on that particular individual's heart. So it is upon him to open up the Quran, to ponder on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the more he ponders, the more his heart softens. The more he ponders, the more he realizes how powerful and how great a creator he is subject to. And the more he ponders on those words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah the Almighty enters this man's heart. My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah is reported to have said, إِذَا غُرِسَتْ شَجَرَةُ الْمَحَبَّةِ فِي الْقَلْبِ if, uh, if, the, if the tree of love in other words, love for Allah and His Messenger is planted in an individual's heart. وَسُقِيَتْ بِمَاءِ ikhlas, And if that tree of love is watered with ikhlas, with the pure water of sincerity, with the pure water of ikhlas, أَثْمَرَتْ أَنْوَاعَ thimar, That tree would grow big and strong and it would start giving a variety of fruits. وَفَرْعُهَا وَأَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ فِي قَرَارِ الْقَلْبِ The roots of that tree will be firmly grounded in that individual's heart. وَفَرْعُهَا مُتَّصِلٌ بِسِدْرَةِ الْمُنْتَهَا And the branches of that tree would go up to a sidratul الْمُنْتَهَا The utmost boundary where even Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam could not cross in the journey of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the utmost boundary and such is the tree of love my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam so let us work on our hearts like I said our hearts are riddled with diseases it is upon us to work on our hearts pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn to him before it's late so that we be successful in this world as well as the hereafter, securing high stations in Jannah for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all of those diseases of our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hearts soft. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to turn to Him before it's too late. May He accept all of our good deeds and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.